girl. Hey, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to the Hot Rod Workshop. Today, it is absolutely freezing in the shop, so we're gonna have a short discussion about a few books that I like that'll kind of get you started in the world of hot rodding. But first, how did that uh, glove box do? Success? Yeah. I mean, it fit well. Problem is it fit maybe a little too well. The cardboard aspect of the old glove box liner, it's nice that it's made of cardboard because it requires a bit of flex in order for you to shoehorn it inside the dash. When you make it out of sheet metal, sure, it's 20 gauge, but it's real rigid. Now, if the dashboard was out of the car, and it was inserted from the backside, it would have been great. But because it was being inserted from the actual door area, it the whole top section had to be removed. So, hey, it works. It's there, but it had to be modified a bit. That's okay. That's working remotely. That's kind of how that works sometimes. So before I absolutely freeze to death, let's talk about a few books that I've come into possession of that have been a huge help for me. Um building my car and working on other old cars. This book in particular is my absolute favorite. I found this book in a pile of old books at the old uh, mom and pop shop that I used to work at. And the owner really had no use for it because he wasn't getting any old cars of this era. But I mean, what an unbelievable bracket of years to encompass in a single book. I mean, not only does it go over flatheads and early overhead valve engines, but it also goes over rear axles. It goes over suspension. It goes over steering. It goes over electrical circuits. It's and it's all it's it's broken down it, diagrams. It, it's it's step by step instructions of how to handle certain things, certain problems, and there's just so much crammed into such a small book. I mean, I've I've consulted this book so many times during building, and it's still to this day, if, if I need help, if something's going on in the engine and I just need a refresher, I mean, this thing is really nice. Now, that book handles a lot of Ford flathead rear axles and, and a lot of mechanical devices of early hot rod components that you'll come across, but it doesn't talk much about bodywork. And when I start going down the road of bodywork, I have to start at the absolute basics, and that is this book here. It's a small book by Martin Tool and Forge, and it's very, very common. You find these in a lot of places. They're cheap. They go over different hammers, different techniques. They go into welding. They go into shrinking. They go into stretching. They go into how to approach a, a dent in what order in order to for the for the memory of the of the metal to kind of find where it wants to be again really great referencing really great book to have now i can't talk about any books about hot rodding in particular without mentioning little books these are fantastic i love these you find these a lot in flea markets online uh, this was my first one this was in a box of a ton of little books that a friend of mine had and I was having issues with my carburetors early on in the build and this goes over so much and this is you know part of the technical library from Hot Rod Magazine but you know there's still a lot to learn from Hot Rod Magazine there's I mean they go into restyling they go into you know uh, larger car stuff they go into very good detail of cars that have been built in different areas and I mean nothing you you hop you 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 run into a hot rod magazine these days or something and then all the advertising it just gets so overwhelming these books even the advertising is cool so and you'll find these in there they're not they're not expensive and you can if you're lucky you can find these in flea markets you can find them in antique shops in the corner and a lot of times you can get them for really next to nothing and the information that you'll find is just incredible i mean this is talking about welding and different techniques here you go is carburetor cleaning and 
rebuilding. Here's body work. I mean, there's so many things that are touched in such a small, small area or small book. And when you start getting into more advanced stuff, I like to find books like this, you know, thicker books about general auto body and repairing tons of information on welding, on lead work. And, and this book in particular, because of how much, how much content is here, it actually goes into individual sections of cars and how to conquer, you know, window molding, how to, how to handle seams, how to handle fenders, how to handle particular angles of impact from a accident and how to approach correcting the issues, correcting the bodywork. Mechanisms for windows, I mean, so much information. And if you're into the bigger cars, into the 50s, into the 60s type cars, this would be a great reference. So, yeah, these are a few books that I like to keep very close to when I'm working on a car or if I have an idea in my head and I just kind of want to iron it out. I always reach for the Ford owner's book in particular, or if there's a metal scenario that I'm having issue with, I can always turn back to the metal bumping book or even the more advanced book back here. And these are always great to have. Of course, a great reference on top of anything in terms of any information regarding these cars, or if you have a real particular question, the ham is a really great reference as well. You can go on their site and ask any question or, you know, run a search of any particular question that you have, and odds are you will stumble across the answer that you're looking for. So yeah, just a real quick uh, reference to a few books that I've, that have helped me a lot along the way. Thanks for watching.